I'm sure all of us have pondered about the great beyond, that there surely is life somewhere out there and with over 40 billion habitable planets in our galaxy itself, with innumerable galaxies found and yet to be found, we can't really be the only ones, can we? Are we the first? Or were there many more before us? Nikolai Kardashev, a Soviet astronomer, thought otherwise. Nikolai Kardashev, during his time at the Sternberg Astronomical Institute, conceptualized a theory that could try and answer some of the greatest questions about interstellar civilizations that lie far beyond. He came up with a self-titled scale that measures a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy it can use. The measure was proposed by him in 1964. Kardashev first outlined his scale in a paper presented at the Burakan Conference, a scientific meeting that reviewed the Soviet radio astronomy space listening program. This paper, entitled Transmission of Information by Extraterrestrial Civilizations, proposes a classification of civilizations into three types based on the postulate of exponential progression. The scale regards energy consumption on a cosmic scale. It initially had three base classes, each with an energy disposal level, Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3. Other astronomers have extended the scale to Type 4 and Type 5. The energy available to this kind of civilization would equal that of all energy available in not just our universe, but in all universes and in all timelines. These additions consider both energy access as well as the amount of knowledge the civilizations have access to. The range extends even further with the inclusion of Type 6 and Type 7, which use metrics other than pure power. A Type 0 civilization harnesses the energy of its resident planet, but not to its full potential. It is important to note that the human race is not even on this scale yet, well, sort of. Since we still sustain our energy needs from dead plants and animals here on Earth, we are a lowly Type 0 civilization, and there's a lot more to be done to be a part of the Type 1 gang. It is believed that we will reach Type 1 in 100 to 200 years, depending on how fast our technology advances and how diligently we procreate. Based on our energy use, in 1973, astronomer Carl Sagan estimated that Earth represented a Type 0.7 civilization. More current assessments put us at about 0.72. Even after 4.5 billion years on Earth, and we still haven't made it to a Type 1 civilization. But we will soon. A Type 1 designation is given to a civilization who have been able to harness all the energy that is available from a neighboring star, gathering and storing it to meet the energy demands of a growing population. This means that we would need to boost our current energy production over 100,000 times to reach here. Being able to harness all of Earth's energy would ultimately mean that we would need to have control over all natural forces. Imagine that. Us humans could be able to control volcanoes, the weather, and earthquakes. In theory, at least. I know it sounds crazy, but compared to the ones that are about to come, these are pretty darn primitive levels of control. In fact, it's practically nothing compared to the stuff that's coming. A Type II civilization can harness the power of their entire star, which basically involves not just transforming starlight into energy, but controlling the entire star. Several methods for this have been proposed, and the most popular of the lot have been the hypothetical Dyson Sphere, which I'm pretty sure you all have heard of before. This device would encompass every bit of the star gathering most or all of its energy output and transferring it to a planet for later use. Likewise, if fusion power, which is the mechanism that powers stars, has been mastered by the race, a reactor on a truly immense scale could be used to satisfy their needs. 
nearby gas giants could be utilized for their hydrogen slowly drained of life by an orbiting reactor. What would this mean for a civilization? Well, nothing currently known to science could wipe out a Type II civilization. For instance, if we survived long enough to reach this status and a moon-sized object entered our solar system on a collision course with our planet, we'd have the ability to vaporize it out of existence. Or if we had time, we could move our planet out of the way, completely dodging it. I mean, if you harness that much power, we will have the means to move other planets as well. You know, we'd have the capability to move Jupiter or another planet of our choice into the way, and as sci-fi as it may sound, there isn't anything that isn't plausible in this case. So, at Type 2, we technically have enough disposable energy to essentially make our civilization immune to extinction. So, what happens in Type 3? Well, here's where it becomes interesting. Type 3 civilization will have the power of galactic traversers applying the relevant knowledge of everything having to do with energy, kind of like becoming a master race. For us humans, it'll take hundreds of thousands of years of evolution both in regard to biological and mechanical. The inhabitants of this Type 3 civilization will be incredibly different from the human race we know today. These may be cyborgs or cybernetic organisms, beings both biological and robotic, with the descendants of regular humans being subspecies among the now highly advanced society. There are several possibilities. These biological humans would likely be seen as being disabled, inferior, or unevolved by their cybernetic counterparts. Within this time, humans have developed colonies of robots that are capable of self-replication. Their population may increase into the millions as they spread across the galaxy, colonizing every star that they lay eyes upon. And these beings might build Dyson spheres to encapsulate each one, creating a huge network that would carry energy back to Earth. That being said, a Type 3 civilization stretching over the galaxy in such a manner would face several problems, like the species would be constrained by the laws of physics, particularly traveling at the speed of light. Unless they develop a working warp drive or use the energy of wormhole teleportation, both being super hypothetical at this point, they can only get so far. Here is where Kardashev kind of stopped. He believed a Type 4 civilization was too advanced and didn't go beyond Type 3 on his scale. He thought that surely this would be the extent of any species' ability. Many think so, but there are few who believe there is more that could be achieved. I mean, consider what we've already heard. Why stop here? A Type 4 civilization would almost be able to harness the energy content of the entire universe. And with that, they could traverse the accelerating expansion of space while some advanced races of these species may even live inside supermassive black holes. How insane is that? To each previous method, the next level seems generally impossible, and it's the same here. A Type 4 civilization would need to tap into energy sources unknown to us using strange or currently unknown laws of physics. And if you thought that was fun, wait until you hear the next ones. Here we go. Type 5. Yep, you heard that right. This might just be the next possible advancement to such a civilization. Here, beings would be like gods, having the knowledge to manipulate the universe as they pleased and having a multiverse culture capable of harnessing the energy of multiple universes. That's what we're dealing with now. If you thought Spider-Man had enough trouble with the multiverse, these guys do it for fun. This theoretical civilization has its roots deep in the popular string theory. The Type 5 civilization would eventually outgrow its own universe and would span countless parallel universes, being able to manipulate the very structure of reality. If you're already having a headache, imagine what it's like for the person writing this. And there's still more to come. 
We're heading deeper and deeper into abstract land, or what I like to call what in the world is happening land. A type 6 civilization exists outside of time and space and is capable of creating universes and multiverses and destroying them just as easily. It's similar in concept to a deity. If you were writing a story about this level, you'd probably fail with such a civilization since its perfection and indestructible nature would offer little to no conflict. And what's a story without conflict? Actually, come to think of it, there might be an angle here. There would probably be a conflict if you were talking about a lower type civilization waiting to be obliterated by a type 6 civilization. Anyway, that's just me thinking aloud. Yep, there's more. A Type 7 civilization would travel, transcend, and ultimately oversee or be the Omniverse, which is the collection of every single universe, multiverse, megaverse, paraverse, dimension, and first realm of reality. I know that sounds insane, but everything is in the Omniverse, and there is only one Omniverse in which a Type 7 civilization would be the creator, destroyer, and master, basically the gods of gods. Here's where things get a little more tricky though. It is likely that such power would not come from civilization, but rather from an individual. As the civilization would have transcended and merged into a single mind that would encompass all thought and all timelines eventually becoming omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. This is the creator, a god above all gods responsible for all of existence, past, and future. This sounds both terrifying and incredibly interesting at the same time. Coming back to our civilizations, humans are a very, very long way from ever reaching anything like this, but that doesn't mean that it cannot be achieved. As long as we take care of Earth and, more importantly, each other, we'll get there in no time. That's a lie, it's still going to take a lot of time, but at least we'll be moving in the right direction. The first step is to preserve our tiny home and get rid of hate and war and continue to support scientific advances and discoveries. It'll at least be one small step towards greatness. So, how do you think human beings are going to reach any of these levels? And do you think we'll ever reach Type 7? Let us know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.